Good morning. What an amazing morning it's been, yeah? How about those baptisms? Wow. <laughs> I was like all so excited. Like I, did, I wanted, I didn't know whether I should scream or yell yeah or yell hallelujah or yell woo or call each one of them by name. I was just beside myself with excitement this morning. Look what the Lord is doing. Changing lives. Like, like the song we sang this morning, everything is changing now. I love that. And so as we continue to celebrate baptisms this morning in our house, I thought we would take a look at a significant baptism in the Word of God, the baptism of Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bibles, um, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 3 and Luke chapter 4. If you're taking notes, the message is called, So Do We? And uh, we're just going to hear from heaven this morning. John the Baptist had been preparing the way for God's church to receive salvation, for God's people to be receiving salvation through the Messiah of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was the forerunner. He was the one that kind of blazed a trail that made a way for Jesus to come on the scene and begin what we know as the salvation plan of God. Well, in the story one day, John was baptizing folks, just like we watched here this morning. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says, One day... When the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. And as he was praying, the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit, in bodily form, descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. This is my son, the voice from heaven said. And that's where Matthew ends chapter three, or Luke ends that chapter. In Matthew, it just ends right there. And I'm thinking, I don't know if you're like me, but when I read that story, I can't help but think, I want to know more. I want to know how John the Baptist responded to that. I want to know what the crowds did when they saw the sky open up, when they heard the audible voice from heaven booming down saying, that's my boy. I love him, my beloved. I'm very pleased with him today. But that's where we end that part of the story. So I want to just say, first of all, there's lots of things we can learn from Jesus' baptism this morning. The first thing is this, Jesus got baptized, so do we. Pastor Kevin already defined that this morning, why we get baptized. Jesus did it as an act of obedience to the Father. It pleased him. Yes, it's symbolism. It's symbolism of us saying, you know what? I identify with Christ. I have faith in Jesus. I'm going to walk his walk. I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to identify with the resurrection. The old me is gone. The new me is is here. Jesus said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are becoming new. Is anybody becoming new here today? Yes. So Jesus got baptized, so do we. The other thing we see in this story is the affirmation of heaven. The affirmation of heaven. The skies opened up. A voice was heard. The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form. Some versions say, like a dove, and it rested on him in that moment. And the voice said, that's my boy. I love him. He's my beloved in him. I am well pleased. And I love that God affirmed his son after Basically, what we could say, he was 30 years old at this time. The last time we heard from Christ was when he was 12. So somebody do the math because I'm not going to. What's 30 minus 12? 18 years. 18 years of living anonymous. We don't know what was going on in Christ's life in those 18 years. But after 18 years of anonymity, is that the word? Being anonymous. He hears the affirmation of heaven 
opening up over him. And I love that what God was doing in that moment, affirming Christ, was actually preparing him for what was about to happen next. This is my son, my beloved, and him I'm well pleased, and the Holy Spirit rested on him like a dove. Next thing we see in Luke chapter 3, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 4, I picture this, immediately after that, the Bible says that the Spirit of God led him into a wilderness. Someone say wilderness. In Luke chapter 4, it says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River, and he was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. And then the devil, oh, y'all thought was, you were hungry right now, and it's only 11. He was fasting 40 days, and he was hungry. In other words, he was weak. And guess who knows when we're weak? The enemy. Jesus ate nothing at that time. He became very hungry. And then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. Does anybody notice the first thing that the enemy tempted Christ with was his identity? Well, if you are the son of God. Listen, moments before that, the whole heavens opened up and declared him the son of God. But just steps later into his journey, we see Christ being tempted with his identity. If you are the son of God, turn these rocks into bread because the enemy also knew his weakness. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. And then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them. And the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone. Lie, I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Can I just suggest to you today two more things from Jesus' baptism story? First, Jesus got baptized, so do we. Second, Jesus needed the affirmation of heaven, so do we. In fact, we see Jesus becoming, receiving the affirmation of heaven several times in his lifetime. We see it when he was born. What happened? The heavens were filled with a host of angels proclaiming the Son of God, the Messiah, has been born. And you will find him in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. For unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Heaven affirmed Christ the day, the moment he was born. And then we see heaven affirming Jesus in the moment of his baptism. We see it again later on in scripture in what's called the transfiguration. The same exact thing happens later on in Jesus' life when he gathered just a few of his friends and climbed up a mountain and he was transformed. The transfiguration and they got to see Christ in a heavenly form that no one else got to see and a voice from heaven shouted down and said, that's my son, my beloved, and him, I am well pleased. So if Jesus needed the affirmation of heaven, so do we. So do we. And if Jesus was tempted in a wilderness season, if Jesus had to walk through temptation in a wilderness, so do we. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Chances are, You're either getting ready to walk into a wilderness season, you are currently walking through a wilderness season, or lucky for you, you're just getting ready to come out of a wilderness season. Anybody in a wilderness season right now? All others, please rise, fly around the room, (laughs) teach us your ways. (laughs) We all face wilderness seasons. And I'd like to think that in that wilderness season, Jesus could look back and hear in his memory the affirmation of heaven. 
Even when things were, strugg- were struggling and even when he was struggling and he was hungry and he was weak and he was tempted, I'd like to think Jesus could stand still and look back and hear what that was like to hear the voice of heaven affirming him. You're mine. That's my girl. My beloved. I'm so pleased with you. I just want to remind you today, you are a child of God. Whether you're going into a wilderness, whether you're walking through a wilderness or coming out of a wilderness season, if you could just turn your ears in the spirit toward heaven and hear the voice of God saying over you, that's my child, my beloved, I'm pleased with you. We need the affirmation of heaven especially when we're walking through the wilderness season. Baptizies this morning. Just because I don't have any other, how do you talk, how, what's the one word you would use to describe someone who just got baptized? Baptizies. <laughs> so to all the beautiful folks who got baptized this morning. I want you to hear the words of heaven's affirmation over you this morning. That's my boy. That's my girl. That's my child. My beloved. Look at them. Look at that. I'm so pleased. You're the delight of his life. You are the apple of his eye. You're his child. He's proud of you. You please him today. And may you never forget the affirmation of heaven over your life. Even when you're tempted to question your identity, even when you're tempted to question your purpose, even when you're tempted to question the calling and the goodness of God, even when your faith wavers, and it might, don't forget the affirmation of heaven over your life. If Jesus faced wilderness seasons, so do we. The other thing we notice from the story of Christ's baptism is that Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. So do we. (laughs) If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to come down and rest on him, being fully God and fully man, so do we. The Holy Spirit, the Bible promises us, leads us into truth. The Holy Spirit is our counselor our comforter, our guide, our teacher, our empowerment, our personal courage, our boldness. And if Jesus Christ walked into a wilderness season being full of the Holy Spirit, I'm here to encourage you, we need that too this morning. We need to be baptized. We need the affirmation of heaven. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives, leading us, guiding us daily, You know, I was reading some of the Baptizzi's testimonies last night because we give them a form that they fill out right before they go into baptism so we can learn more about them and hear their story. And my heart was so touched when we asked the last question. It says, what are you believing God for from here? And so many, paper after paper, form after form, men, women, children, teenagers, we're all saying the same thing. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me going forward. Yeah. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me. I want God to take me on a path. I want God to lead me in my next steps. I want God to show me the way. I want God to to be with me going forward. And we have that through the gift of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus departed the earth, he said, don't worry. I got to go up to heaven, but I'm going to send you a promise. I'm going to send you the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ with us today. And even though Christ isn't here in bodily form, he dwells within us. Our moral compass, if you will, our personal counselor, if you will, our compass, our guide, our teacher, our conviction today. 
And from this day forward, all of us believers should be walking in the power, in the boldness, in the conviction, in the encouragement of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's a promise. It's our promise today. And yeah, sometimes when you're in the wilderness, you get your eyes, you get your ears, you get your focus off the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you today. Do what Jesus did in his wilderness. Remember the affirmation. Get out your sword, which is the word of God. And fight the enemy because your holy father in heaven has already equipped and empowered you to walk through that wilderness. He has already equipped you and empowered you to walk through. He's already given you everything you need to get to the other side. Jesus gives us such a beautiful example. As the worship team comes back, I just want to close with this thought. Now, follow me. Jesus got baptized, so do we. Jesus needed the affirmation of heaven. So do we. Anybody need the affirmation of heaven today? Yeah, we all do. Jesus faced a wilderness season. And I wish I could tell you differently, but so do we. So do we. Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit. So do we. So do we. But here's the one thing I really want you to know. This is the point I really, really, really want you to see in Luke chapter four, after the baptism, after the filling of the Holy Spirit, beyond the temptation, Jesus came out of the wilderness. Somebody say, I'm coming out. You know what I meant. Chapter four, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led, oops, wrong verse. Hold on, hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Okay, verse 14. I'm going to go back to 13. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity. And the Bible said that the angels came at that moment and ministered to Jesus themselves. The enemy left and the angels came, ministered to Christ, gave him everything he needed. Verse 14 says, then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Someone say filled. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. And when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and he stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And then he rolled up the scroll and he handed it back to the attendant and he sat down. The Bible says that all eyes in the synagogue were on him in that moment. I just want you to picture this. Jesus Christ came out of being anonymous, got baptized, received the affirmation of heaven publicly and audibly over him, received the power of the Holy Spirit resting on him, but then had to face a wilderness. Do you see the pattern here this morning? Maybe some of you can relate to the baptism. Then some of you can relate to that season in your life. You thought you were doing the right thing and then suddenly life got hard. You thought you were doing good, but suddenly you became weary in doing good. You thought you were on the right path, but then you faced a season that was dry and barren and difficult and challenging and you're wondering why. I want to show you today 
Jesus came out of the wilderness season with more anointing, more power, more authority. So do we. So do we. It is not in vain what you're going through. It is not in vain. Your God did not call you to a wilderness. He called you as overcomers of the wilderness. He calls you victorious. He calls you the head and not the tail. He calls you above and not beneath. He calls you his child this morning. He says no weapon formed against you will prosper. God has a plan beyond your wilderness. You're going to see anointing. You're going to see a power. You're going to see the authority of God on you like never before in Jesus' name. Somebody say, so do we. So do we let the church stand up in Jesus' name. How many want more of the Holy Spirit in your life? Raise your hand if you want more power, more anointing, more authority, more victory. I have to tell you this. With every new battle, you'll gain more victory. And with every new victory, you're gonna gain more authority in Jesus' name. So hold on through that wilderness because you're gonna rise up and you're gonna speak to those enemies. You're gonna speak to the barrenness in someone else. You're gonna speak to the weakness in others. You're gonna proclaim the goodness of God. Greater is he who is in with you than he who is within the world. Holy Spirit, we ask you for more power, more anointing, more authority. We thank you for the promise that on the other side of this wilderness, Lord, you have a victory for your people. You have an authority and a calling. Lord Jesus, help us not to become weary in the wilderness. Remind us of the affirmation of heaven. Equip us, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit that even when we get tempted, you will make a way out of that temptation. We're coming out. We're coming out. We're coming out on the other side with more power. We're going to preach the good news of Jesus. Acts 1.8 says, you will receive power to be my witnesses. That's exactly what Jesus did. He came out of the wilderness and he started preaching the gospel. I believe God's calling preachers today. I believe God's calling witnesses today. I got, God, God is giving somebody a testimony today, not so you could go through pain, but you could preach to somebody who's also going through what you became victorious over. Do you receive the word of God today in Jesus' name? Amen.